I'll start. Okay, so um, so today, ladies and gentlemen, um, my allocated theme for, for today's session was pictorialism and personally, um, when I've been listening to presentations in the past, um, they, there's a lot of knowledge and a lot to take in and I, I, I personally struggle with that. Um, so what I'm going to try and do throughout my presentation is look at the photographers, um, Ansel Adams and Alfred Seidman, um, look at a bit of, about themselves, um, a bit of their images, analyzing what can, what, how it relates to pictorialism, um, and then reflect with a quote, um, and then at the end of the day I want to um, summarize these two photographers together. So um, I asked myself, what, what is pictorialism? Well, according to the online dictionary, um, it's the creation or use of pictures or visual images, especially of recognizable or realistic representations. Um, emphasis on purely photographic or scenic qualities for its own sake, sometimes with a static or lifeless effect. Well, I read that and it doesn't really mean much to me um, as a photographer. I struggle with this. So, to sum it up, really, um, there is no standard definition of the term, but in general, it refers to a style in which the photographer has somehow manipulated what would otherwise be a straightforward photograph as a means of creating the actual image rather than just simply recording it. Um, so as we talk about creating this image, we have to um, pre-visualise what we want, but it's also about making um, the images look more towards fine art instead of just photography. Um, what effect has it had on photography? Well, back um, in the 18th, 19th century, um, you, they were taken on large format cameras, um, so you can only take around a few slides with you. Um, so therefore, you only have one or two chances of actually taking the pictures. Um, so you had to pre-visualise this. Um, but if you look at, like, as technology has advanced, um, you know, today you can go out and buy a digital SLR and you can just set it on auto mode and just snap lots of, lots of pictures. And, um, you know, it's, it's a lot easier that way, but then it kind of loses this um, pre-visualisation. You, have, you, you don't really think about the story behind the picture. You take the picture and then add the story to it. So it's, that's how it's kind of changed photography. Um, okay, so we'll look at um, Alfred Steiglitz. Um, he's my first photographer. He was an American photographer and modern art promoter. Um, he was an editor for the American Amateur Photo Photographer magazine. Um, and he mainly used um, medium format cameras. Um, believe it or not, he actually studied in Berlin, studying um, mechanical engineering, until this passion was found for photography. And um, when we look at the quote later on, um, we'll find a little bit more about that. Um, but from researching some of his work, I found that he liked to um, photograph transitions from like old <coughs> to new. So, for example, if you look at some of his um, older or earliest work, um, you can see like. Um, the horse and carriage moving through New York. But if you look at his later work, he's documenting the industrial age and the, you know, the smog um, and the, the steam engines. Um, what, he, what he was trying to accomplish while taking these pictures, he tried to make them look more like paintings as possible. Um, and this was called pictorialism. His movement was the avant-garde, and we had a presentation on that earlier on. Um, but this was the photography of the time. So we'll look at the, the first image that I looked at was the, the Sturridge taken in 1907. Um, and it was used, taken in the form of my camera, it has been hailed as one of the most greatest photographs of all time because it captured in a single frame both a formative document um, of its time and one of the first works of artistic modernism. Um, it was published um, in 1911 in an issue of the, the camera work which he documented most of his work with his friends. Um, but he, he, so he devoted this magazine to his time, mainly his own work of photography. Um, but um, it appeared the following year on the cover of a magazine selection of the Sunday Evening Mail, which was um, a New York magazine in 1912. I don't think it exists any longer. But uh, the scene depicts a variety of men, women and children, um, travelling from New York to Germany. And as you can see on the 
bottom deck with the lower class people. Um, you can tell by the, the way they're acting and the way they're dressed. And on the, the upper deck, we have the, the upper class. And the thing that um, makes this image for me is the drawbridge across the, the centre. It's like this barrier between the lower class people and the upper class. And I think this is what um, Alfred was trying to get across. And you can't really see it the way the picture is, but on the, the right, there is um, some steps going up to the upper class. So it's, for me, um, it's like the upper class can go up, but you can only go up and the upper class can't come down. So that's what I think he was trying to um, achieve when he took that picture. Uh, the next one is the, the Hand of Man, also taken in 1902. Um, and, yeah, it sets up a comparison between the machine that is depicted and the human artistic impulse that creates the image. It's quite dark on the presentation, but the, um, the, imi the image depicts the importance of the machine in the modern industrial age. Um, so I'm going to read the actual um, the narrative behind it, um, behind this image, um, just so you get a bit of a... A, lo a locomotive engine steams towards the camera on its barely visible tracks, wearing a billowing black cloud of smoke like a plumed hat. The crisscrossing lines of the tracks beside it snake off towards the horizon, and the telephone poles at the left appear to be making the same march. So he's, he's capturing this industrial age, this change, which kind of links into modern, modernism, because um, that is, um, as we saw before, looking at change. So the quote that I decided um, to paste this photographer on is, it fascinated me first as a passion and then as an obsession. Well, for the photographer, it kind of links in with me a little, um, this quote, which is why I like it, because the second year of college um, is when I actually started photography and it's become um, a passion and now it's more of an obsession that I carry my camera around um, but it links quite well here as well um, because he actually started off doing um, mechanical engineering and it's linked into photography and this passion for it has now taken over and he's become a photographer. So my next photographer is Antal Adams, um, he's a 20th century pictorialist. Um, the most ionic photographs that Antle took as well as climbing Mount Clark in Virginia. Um, believe it or not, he had um, a twin obsession with music and the mountains. So, in the winter months where it was too cold to go out to photograph, he used to supposedly practice the piano for six hours a day. Um, and in the summer months, he went out walking through the mountains um, documenting um, you know, his journey. Um, his first photographs were little more than snapshots, aids to memory. Disappointed they conveyed so little of what he had seen and felt when he was there, he wanted, he wanted to set out to learn the ways of photography to see how he could capture this, this, this story, this narrative, which relates back to um, pictorialism. Um, so his first image, um, actually I couldn't find the title for this, um, so I just landscape. Um, so what do I see from this image? Uh, the image of the mountains is reflected onto the water, which draws the audience's eye to the centre. However, it's almost symmetrical with the actual mountains above, so it feels like, it, for me, it creates an image within an image. Um, even, though it's, even though this image is black and white, the, the, the reflection of the water still portrays some colour. Um, to me, it represents lots of very dark and light shades of black and grey. Giving this, giving this photo depth, um, which works off the zone system which Adams founded, as we looked at before. Um, the clouds colour creates a dark and isolating mood because it's different shapes of clouds all the shadow on the top of the picture. This makes it seem as though the clouds have been closed to you from the rest of the world and it's just you and the mountains. Um, the black and white effect con connotes loneliness and uncertainty, which helps us feel the moment that Adams was experienced the emotion of being isolated. So I think um, before he set out, um, the, the narrative, the story behind um, these sets of images is that he was, you know, he wanted to capture this, you know, this loneliness, this on his own, this isolation. Um, the next image is very similar to the first, and it's the, the related really, because um, it's still capturing this loneliness and. 
Uh, like lots of Adam's work, it, it, that's what it depicts. And uh, the mountains in the background are small and quite simple. Um, <coughs> so it draws our eye into the water and the detail of the water, which then leads us back to the mountains. So it kind of like helps us absorb the whole image because as we're looking through it, it's drawing us up and then down and then back again. So we absorb the whole picture. Um, the water starts off very detailed as Adams has captured the ripples. Um, but as the water continues up, it loses detail, which creates a sense of distance from the start of the water to as far as the eye can see. This has um, a big impact on myself because I feel, looking at this picture, um, I feel like I'm actually stuck there taking it. Um, but you can't really tell with these online images. I went to, um, in June, uh, the Bradford Media Museum, and I looked at some Howard Edgerton's work, which has nothing to do with this. But, um, if you actually look at the original, original things, um, it's so much different than just looking at these. Um, so you don't take a photograph, you simply make it, um, which relates back to the pictorialism, what I said earlier on, which I thought this is important. Um, so how are all photographers linked? Well, as we found out earlier on, they were very good friends, and um, they like to take pictures very similarly. So even when the subjects are similar, Adam's pictures have a sense of observation that is not personally implicated, as Steinbeck's work is. I feel that Adam's images are more emotionally distant. So, um, so Steinbeck's work, the pictorialism behind it, or the, the pictorial, is quite obvious, but as you look at Adam's work, um, you have to think about it a little more. And that's the end of the time.